Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. My name is Stephanie, and I'm a therapist here at the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Valley Cities here in Lakewood, Washington. And welcome to Friday Morning Art. Today, I thought I'd show you another fun and relaxing activity that you can do with some basic household supplies, such as paper, pens, pencils, markers, colored pencils if you have them, or even to some watercolored paints, depending on what you might have available nearby. This is a fun and simple activity that absolutely anybody can do, uh, spanning the age range. Really, it's a fun activity for the whole family. And something too that you can do not just today, but if you have some time, which we might have right now since we're all kind of stuck inside still, to do over the next couple of days to really create something that's quite special for yourself. So what is this activity? Well, today I thought I'd share with you guys one of my favorites, and this is called the Getaway Guidebook. This is a way for all of us to kind of take a little mini mental vacation without actually having to step outside our houses, which a lot of us can't really do right now. So this is a great way for us to still kind of immerse ourselves in some of those beautiful places that may be closed at the moment, but that we might like to get back to because maybe they provide good memories, good feelings, or even to feelings of peace, comfort, and relaxation. So why don't I show you my example here today? So as you can see here, I've constructed a small book using some yarn, some thick water, watercolor paper, and of course a few different types of art supplies. Um, and what I've done here is created a few different places that I could kind of get away to intentionally. So that way when I'm stuck inside and bored and needing a little bit of an escape, I can look at some of these places and immerse myself in the sensory experiences that I remember having had been there. Although too, if you haven't been to some of these places or if there's some places that you might like to go, this is a great opportunity to use those as well. I invite you to find some different places and some details about these places by checking them out online, looking for some different pictures or maybe even talking to some other friends or family members who have been there before. So I'm gonna share with you guys my example. So this first place here is a beach in Hawaii. And actually it reminds me of a time when I was 15 and I went there with my mom and my sister and we got a chance to spend a beautiful week just enjoying the beach, going snorkeling, enjoying the water, going on hikes and walks around town, and really just kind of relaxing, right? Getting a chance to soak up all that wonderful sun and vitamin D. And so that's my first place in my getaway guidebook is that beach in Hawaii. And as you can see here, I added some details, uh, little clouds in the sky, right? A big beach blanket, and of course, to some fish down in that sparkling blue clear ocean. Um, all of these little details are really important to me because when I look at this page, it takes me, or I should say those are what takes me right back to being in this place. It's just those wonderful sensory details. I can even kind of recall the smell of the salt in the air, the crashing of the waves on the sand, and really to just starting to think about that place, I can feel some of that stress leave right? It feels like it's just kind of melting away. So that's my first place. But of course, I didn't just want to create one, although of course you can. There's really no right or wrong way to make this activity. So if you wanted to just create one nice big piece of somewhere that you've been that's special to you, go for it. There's no right or wrong. For me, I really wanted to have a few different places that I could kind of take my mind back to, depending on what I was feeling and where I was at that day. So my second one here is a beautiful waterfall that's actually located at a state park in uh, Pennsylvania called Ricketts Glen. And this waterfall is one that I've been to a million times, or at least it feels like it's been a million times. Um, every single time I get a chance to go back to Pennsylvania, I like to try to get there if I can, because it's just off in the woods. It's a beautiful place, secluded. They've got a great lake there. But then also too, they have these amazing waterfalls. And this is definitely my favorite. It's like a 92 foot waterfall, which if you get a chance to hike, it's quite a hike, um, but well worth it. And really too, it gives you the opportunity to just get back into nature and get away from all of those stressors that we can find ourselves in with daily life. Uh, so since I can't get back to this place and because I'm also too here in Washington, I love being able to flip over to this page and kind of go back and reconnect with all those wonderful memories of hiking there, of spending time with my family there, and really too, just spending time sitting by the waterfall. It's a great place to really, again, kind of 
immerse myself into nature and allow some of those stressors to just kind of fall away. So that's my second place. My third, though, is a place that's not too far. It's my backyard. It's a wonderful place where I'm able to relax with my cats, where I have a big, beautiful cherry blossom tree that, especially right now here, as we start off spring, um, it's blooming. And then, of course, too, as, it, as the blooms and petals start to fall away, it looks like it's snowing in the backyard, which is absolutely gorgeous. So that's my third place, um, is just being able to get back into the yard and really be able to sit there and enjoy um, all that surrounds me. So again, what I've done is I really added some details to each one of these illustrations so I could remind myself of those sensory experiences like those sights, those sounds, the smells, even to some of the warm fuzzy emotions that it brings up being at these places. So in doing so, again, by adding these details, it really gives me that opportunity to kind of go back and relive those experiences. And again, as you can see, I just binded this book together by creating or punching some holes in the top of my paper and making a little tie with some yarn. So today, that's what I'm gonna show you guys here to do is to make your own getaway guidebook. And so what I've done is I found some paper. Again, I, I like to use a little extra thick uh, cardstock or watercolor paper. There's also mixed media paper out there, but really any kind of paper that you find around your house is great for this activity. It doesn't need to be any special type. So for me, I've already started to think about a few other places that either I've been or that I'd like to go to that I really want to use for my new book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a cover. Um, but of course, as you guys can see here, I've sectioned out some of my paper and I've already cut it into pieces. And before I get started adding anything to this, painting them, decorating them, anything, the very next thing that I want to do is go ahead and add the holes first. And the reason why I do this is because I don't know about you guys, but this is the one part of the activity that I sometimes forget at the end. And then I go, oh no, I have to punch over one of my favorite pictures or my favorite image. I can't do that. So I'm going to start off so that way my holes are already placed and they're already ready to go. That way when I'm done and at the end, I can just go ahead and get my yarn, clips, anything that I might have nearby. Even a rubber band and a paper clip could be used to bind your book together. There's a lot of different uh, household items that we can use to make this activity. So really be creative and find what might work best for you. So as I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and punch my holes here and get my book ready. Then the very next thing I'm going to do is again, so I've started to think about some of those places that I'd like to use for my guidebook. Um, so I'm going to start to think, too, about what materials that I'd like to use to really illustrate or create those places. And so, hey, guys, you might be thinking, well, hey, I'm not an artist. I'm not a drawer. In fact, I really don't like to draw. How could I still do this activity without having to draw or to maybe kind of recreate some of these places, especially if I don't feel like I'm, I'm necessarily comfortable enough doing that? Well, another option here for this activity, of course, is to use collage. Use a magazine, some fun different images that you can find around the house, cut them up, and of course, if you have any glue or Mod Podge from our activity of last week, you can definitely use that to create your book as well. But I will say this too, and just like last week, I like to start off my activities by kind of connecting to that inner critic and then asking them to get out, right? Throw them out the door, kick them out the window, all that kind of good stuff, because really this time and space and place is just for us to engage in a little creativity, to express ourselves, to kind of get away from some of those stressors in life and really get into a nice, enjoyable activity. So because of that, I want to kick out that self, that inner critic, that negative self-talk. I don't want that to be a part of my fun hour and my activity that I'm doing here today because it's really, for me, not about the product. It doesn't matter if some of my images at the end come out not exactly how I wanted them to, it's okay. It's more about the process and enjoying the experience. Even just dragging my brush across the paper here today is going to give me the opportunity to really connect and just relax. And that's my intention. So before we begin here, guys, let's go ahead and do that. We'll set our intention. If you'd like to really get connected to your chair, right? Plant your feet on the floor, 
wiggle your toes in your shoes, right? Take a few nice deep breaths. Maybe one more. And really kind of set our minds for the activity that we're about to get into. So again, we're gonna think of our favorite places, all the wonderful places that bring all those good feelings, positive thoughts and memories, and a two, that feeling of relaxation and comfort. So I don't want any negativity here. This time is just gonna be for us. So with that said, and with my intention set, knowing that I'm gonna spend these next few minutes just really enjoying this activity, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So for me, what I like to do is I like to, again, use a few different uh, art materials, a few different techniques. So for my cover, I'm going to use uh, watercolors. And because of that, I'm gonna tape down my paper here with a little bit of masking tape. So that way it doesn't get away from me as I start to paint it. And so the edges don't really curl up. Plus two, while this is sitting and drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to some of my other pieces so that way I don't have to miss a beat. Although I do invite you guys to kind of think about how you'd like this to look for yourselves. Of course, if you'd like to, you could challenge yourself and create a piece every day. And then at the end of the week, bind your book up and see how many pieces you were able to create. Or if you want to, you can do this just as we're doing this now and create the whole book in one sitting. Again, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever you feel best with. So since I've got my piece taped down, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my favorite watercolor brushes, which I brought along with me today, so that way I could do this technique. So for me, I like playing around with a few different watercolor techniques. And for my uh, front cover for my book, I'm gonna do the wet on wet technique. So I'm gonna take some uh, water and I'm just going to paint the water onto my paper first. And so what this does is that this is going to help disperse the paint uh, onto the paper a little bit better as I apply it. So I'm just dipping my brush now into one of my colors here and adding it to the paper. And of course it thins it out a lot more, it blends it a little bit better, and it really gives it more of a pastel kind of lighter color, which is what I'm looking for. I really wanna use some of my favorite colors for this book too, so that way when I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, I absolutely love it, right? I want it to be something that I go to right away, I pick up when I'm thinking about it, and then I can kind of just dive right into, right? So definitely create something that sparks a lot of joy for you, because the more it does, the more likely we are to grab it in those moments when we really need it the most. So now that I've added a little bit of color here, I'm gonna go back and just add a second so I can add some dimension to this and really kind of make it fun. So, and again, because I like to be a little bit more abstract and kind of messy with some of my stuff, I'm just gonna kind of slosh it down here a little bit, dab it on and kind of create a fun texture. All right, so another fun thing here you guys can do too is that if you have any salt, right, you can take a little bit of salt and you can sprinkle it on top of your watercolor as well, simply because the salt will absorb the water and it creates a really neat effect which is what I did for the front of this book. And I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer here, guys. I hope you can see that. Turn a little bit, but it creates a really neat little pattern. All these kind of little uh, dots or little uh, marks all over the page. So uh, that's what uh, is another option for you guys that you can do here too, if you're using some watercolors. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to one of my actual images. And a place that I've been to that I really enjoy and that I'm thinking about right now is Arizona. Um, so uh, my husband and I went to visit some friends not too long ago uh, down in Arizona in Phoenix. And when we were there, it was the first time that I ever visited. I really got a chance to see some neat things, get out into the desert a little bit. And so that's a place that I'm gonna recreate today. And as I said, since I have a few different types of art uh, supplies and materials here, uh, for this one, I'm, I'm gonna use some markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of select some of my favorite colors here that remind me um, of this desert image that I'm going to create and some of the elements that I'd like to add to it. Um, because definitely when I think back to this, 
So it was July in Arizona. Man, it was hot. It was about 120 degrees, I think, at the, at the very highest. And so I kind of want to capture that feeling of being in the sun, that really warm, radiant heat. Um, and again, all the wonderful sensory details that go along with it. That beautiful sight, um, of course, the mesas, the desert, right? Um, and two, the really neat little prairie dogs that we got a chance to see kind of running across the street and stuff like that. Lots of really cool stuff uh, for me to think of in this memory. So that's what I'm going to do here is just take a little bit of time and recreate it. So of course, like I said here, two guys, you don't have to go based off of a memory. It could be a picture of a place that you've seen before. It could be something that somebody's told you about before, or even to an imaginary place that you kind of like to go, maybe within yourself, a kind of a mental image of a place that maybe feels comforting to you. So the desert in Arizona is going to be my first piece. But then the second that I'm going to create is a place that I haven't been to, which is why I want to share that with you guys, and that's Japan. And so, of course, here in the springtime, uh, as you guys may have known or seen, um, Japan has a beautiful cherry blossom festival. They have gorgeous trees all over. And that's something that, although I've never been to before, I'd really like to get to. So that's going to be my second image. And I'm going to take a few minutes here and just get started. So again, I'm starting with my first image here of Arizona. Um, but again, as I think of all these different places, I'm thinking of those sensory details. I'm thinking of the sights, the sounds, the smells, really what brings this place back to me. So I'm going to start off by creating that big, beautiful sun. And of course, some of the desert uh, sand and floor below. Maybe I'll even add a cactus or two. All right, guys, so I'm, again, I'm just uh, creating my image of Arizona here. And with my markers and things like that, I kind of just like to quick, make quick little marks. Of course, you guys do what feels best to you. We all have different styles and ways of drawing and creating, which is what makes us each unique. And it's really wonderful, too. That's what I love so much about art, is that we all have different ways kind of sharing and showing what it is that, that we connect most with. All right, everyone. So I've just gone ahead and like I said, I created my image of Arizona. As you guys can see here, I added a really bright red sun, right, to show that heat, the clear blue sky in the background. And of course, I added some cacti down there at the bottom too. So again, really create this however you'd like. You know, of course you can add as many details as you'd like. Use different media too. Of course, if you want to, if you have some gel pens, you could really add some glitter to this, a little extra sparkle. Or if you guys too have some stickers, things of that nature from maybe some other leftover craft activities that you have, you can add those as well. And in fact, I've got a really great cloud sticker that I think I'm gonna add here. Super cute. Little cloud sticker. And in fact, they're stuck together here. So I think I'm going to cut them apart so I can have two clouds. Just take a little bit there. There we go. But really, again, use whatever you've got around the house, whatever you might find, or stop by your, one of your local stores, uh, you know, to go, sort of that pickup uh, or car side delivery if you can. If you need any of these fun things, uh, you can find them at some of those craft stores nearby, right, Michaels, or even to the Dollar Tree. I don't kiss, discount finding some really good art supplies and some cool stuff down there at the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store, right? Um, we can use this stuff uh, or just about anything that you have that you really would like to add. And of course, too, if you've got some glue, it'll help stick some of those things down for you. So now that I've added or created my first piece, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started on my image of Japan and those beautiful cherry blossoms. So bear with me, guys, as I get to going. All right, guys, so here I am getting started on my Japanese piece, right? Um, since I've never been there before, I decided to bring up an image on my uh, phone here so that, that way I could get a good representation and get some of those, again, sensory details that I'd like to add to this to really kind of give me that opportunity to dive into this. So immerse myself in that experience as if I'm really there. Uh, so the picture that I chose, uh, there's a beautiful, it looks like river, 
And of course, there's cherry blossom trees uh, lining the entire riverbank and Mount Fuji is in the background. So I am going to turn my piece sideways here and uh, do a panoramic view, so to speak, of this scene or image. So that way, again, I can really capture some of these beautiful details. Here I am just kind of adding some green to the riverbanks. And again, I'm just using some markers here. Really, whatever kind of uh, art supply you guys have, feel most comfortable with, would be good to use. Uh, I love these markers because they uh, create some really beautiful colors. Um, and really kind of just make things pop a bit. Plus, uh, these are the kind that you can blend a little too, so I really love that uh, added feature. So uh, for the next thing that I'm going to do is just start to add my trees. Okay, guys, so I've got uh, my tree uh, trunks added along the base of my river here, and of course, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I started to add Mount Fuji in the background, and so now I'm just gonna go ahead and add all those beautiful cherry blossoms, which, for me, and especially too when I'm drawing and creating, sometimes I just like for it to be a little loose, abstract. I really just like to kind of connect with my feelings in the moment and go with the flow. Again, this isn't really about creating uh, a product at the end that I um, would want to necessarily hang in a gallery, so to speak. That's uh, although, of course, we do create those pieces. Hey, okay? that's awesome. Uh, for me, though, again, it's about the process, uh, really just allowing myself to feel the pens, connect with what it is that I'm creating, and, and just have some fun with it. So I'm getting kind of silly here, drawn all over. I'm definitely going to go back, add a few different color of pinks uh, to really capture some of those different uh, shades and types of cherry blossom trees that there are. Cherry trees, I guess I should say, that there are. So again, just add in some dashes. Right. I'm having some fun with it. All right, everyone. So here I am, all finished so far with my, of course, uh, Japanese cherry blossoms. Um, so I'm really loving this. Of course, I can continue to add some more details if I'd like. Uh, the more we add, again, the more we really connect to this piece. So. But I'd like to go ahead and move on to my third piece, so that way I can get started too uh, on my cover, because it looks like it's slowly uh, wrapping itself up here. It's, it's almost dry. I've just got a few little wet spots in the corners. Uh, so by the time I'm done with this next one, it should be all set and ready to go. And then I'll be able to actually put my books in. So for my last piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an image of a place that's also near and dear to my heart that I have been. It's just been a little while since I've been there, uh, but that's Multnomah Falls down in Oregon. Um, of course, I've been there a few times, especially when I first moved out here. That was one of my favorite places to go. It's an absolute gorgeous place. And again, kind of get away to be in nature and to really kind of immerse myself in all the beauty that uh, is within Multnomah Falls and that of course surrounds that place. All of Mount Hood is just absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I'm going to do for this last one here. Except for this one, instead of using markers, I decided I'm gonna go back to my watercolors uh, because I really want to use those to kind of capture this image and some of that uh, sense of water that's kind of coming off of, of the waterfall, right? A little bit of that mist and stuff like that, which I feel like I'd, I'd be able to really do well with watercolors. So. I'm going to go ahead and get a few of my other brushes here and uh, get started. I think for this one, I'm going to go ahead and start with the background, a little bit of the sky first, make it a nice kind of clear blue day. And so I'm going to start up at the top and just blend uh, my blue down in. Of course, if it's a little too strong, just add a little extra. And that softens it right up. So I'm going to bring that down. And of course, too, I haven't done this here, guys, but if you need to at home, definitely put down uh, something underneath. You know, of course, with watercolors, you can get a little bit messy. 
get a little bit of the water in the paint on the outside edges here. So uh, if you need to definitely put down a uh, paper towel or tablecloth, something of that nature, just to protect your surface. Uh, for me, thankfully, this one's gonna be a little easy to clean. So even though I might've forgotten that one, I, I'll be able to catch up on this, okay. So again, just bringing down my blue sky and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add a little bit of green at the bottom to meet up with, it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of kind of grass and things of that nature. Just to kind of reflect all that's around the falls there, right? There's a beautiful trail, takes you all the way up to the top if you like. Of course, my favorite spot, I can imagine like many people who may go there, is standing on the bridge uh, to see the falls. So again, I'm just blending out my green and I'm blending it to meet up with my blue just by adding some more water. More water just helps the paint move around a little bit more, makes it a little bit easier to blend. And I'm gonna just kind of give this a second or two for the bottom to dry. So that way I can go ahead and add those rocks, a few other details, and really create this beautiful piece. All right guys, so what I'm doing here is I'm uh, continuing to work on my piece of Multnomah Falls. And right now I'm just kind of stippling on um, or just allowing my paintbrush to kind of bounce up and down here on the page as I create some trees uh, to go along the side of the fall here and up the mountain. So I'm starting with a darker green at the base. And again, as you guys can see here, I'm just allowing my bounce or my, my brush to kind of bounce up and down. Uh, so that way I can get this kind of blotted, uh, dotted kind of look for the trees. I want it to look a little abstract, doesn't have to represent every single leaf. Uh, so play around with this and have some fun. Of course, you can use a few different types of brushes. Uh, fan brushes are really good for this too. Uh, just gives you that little extra bit of texture. So I'm going to continue down and and just add a few little ferns and leaves and things like that to represent all the beautiful greenery that's here at the falls. While I'm thinking about this again, I'm just kind of thinking back to those times that I went, some of those good memories, hiking, and again, all those wonderful sensory details, right? To, the sound of the falls rushing, right? The, the water running over the rocks, even to <clears throat> just uh, the sounds of other people there, right? Um, it's one of the most beautiful places to go. There's always tons of people there uh, checking it out, doing the hikes, stuff like that. So uh, that's the other thing that I kind of miss and remember as I'm making this uh, image or scene of this place is just all the other people that were there too really enjoying this spot. It's one of the most beautiful places or falls that I know that I've been to, uh, with the exception of the one there at Ricketts Glen. Of course, so as you guys can probably see here, water's a theme with me, right? Those are my favorite places is where water's at. Um, I guess because I guess that's what I find to be so relaxing, is just the sounds, the sights, the smells, um, all the wonderful things that water brings to these places. And of course, right, the lush greenery. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go back through and I'm just going to add a little bit of extra texture here. I'm going to add a lighter green color on top of my leaves. Same thing, just that same kind of stipple texture, um, of course, but play around with it. You can do a few different uh, types of brush strokes and things of that nature to, to really get different effects with what you're going for. Uh, for me, though, too, you know, I could see here I just made a mistake. That's okay. Hey, these things happen. Um, in fact, I got a little bit of a leaf over my waterfall. That's fine. I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to keep adding to my leaves here. I'm not going to worry so much about, like I said before, whether I do make mistakes or not. Hey, that's okay. These things happen. It's not about uh, that end product. It's more about the process, right? Just engaging in these wonderful memories and thinking about these beautiful places that we've been. So again, just add a few 
last details here. I'm going to add some lines to the water, maybe even a few um, swirls down here at the bottom of the pool, right? Just to show all that mist, that bubbling that goes along with those waterfalls and just a few little extra details. So I'll share this here with you guys. As you can see, hopefully I can get this close enough, right? There's my Multnomah Falls. Um, of course, I can go back and I can add some more details. I'm going to probably add some tree trunks and things of that nature. But I'd like to go ahead and uh, let this rest for a minute so I can get back to my main cover. I'm going to peel off my tape now that it's dry. And I see that uh, some of my, my tape or my paper, I guess I should say, is coming up with it. That's okay. Uh, every once in a while, that'll happen. You'll get a little bit of a rip or a rough edge. I like it. I think that it just adds that extra texture and that extra character to it. So. so I'll show this here to you guys. Of course, this is my cover. I just used a little bit of purple and some blue to create this soft overall effect. And now what I'm going to do is I'd like to create just a little bit of an image uh, that kind of uh, clues me into what this piece is, right? Uh, just a little bit of a visual connection. Uh, so in my last book, and this is something that I often do, a little symbol that I put on my uh, art uh, creations, I guess I should say, is this heart, which almost looks like a little bit of a flower, right? It looks like there's little petals around it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again, uh, because again, that's meaningful, has some purpose and value to me. So I'm going to go back and instead of using watercolors for this, I'm going to do a little mixed media and add uh, or use my markers instead. I'm going to create my heart right here in the center. And add my little petals around it. So I invite you guys to do that as well, right? Different symbols, things that we can use to represent ourselves. It's a fun way of putting down a message, uh, almost like a little bit of a hidden message, right? It means something to us, not necessarily uh, to anyone else if they were to see it though. So that's what I love about these little symbols and about some of the cool characteristics we can add to our art pieces is that we can really personify it, make it our own, and make it super special by adding some of those unique characters. So I kept mine simple. I just put a little purple heart there again. I added my flower petals around it to create my symbol. And that's going to be the cover of my book. Uh, so now that I've got all of my pieces done, I'm going to go ahead and get this together. So you guys put this in any order that you feel is most important to you. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put my Multnomah Falls on top uh, because that's actually the one that all, out of all of them so far, I've really, really enjoyed and it's the place that I want to go to first. So it's going to be on top of all of my images. And as you guys can see here, I'm just aligning my book. So I'm putting my uh, pieces back together so I can connect those holes that I made at the beginning of my activity here. Uh, so in that way, right, I didn't cut off any of the cool things that I made. I also too, um, they're already there so I don't have to worry about going back and doing now I'm going to go ahead and just grab some yarn. This is some stuff that I had at home. Put a pair of scissors and I'm going to go ahead and make some ties here up at the top so I can tie my pages together. But of course you guys use whatever you've got. Like I said, if you, if you can, you can use a rubber band uh, and a paper clip. That's one way of connecting it. Uh, another two would be, of course, if you have any binder clips. Uh, that actually might be really nice because if you guys decide to do uh, one a day or if you just want to add to it later on down the road, uh, you can go ahead and just simply open up those binder clips, right, and then continue to add uh, more beautiful places to your guidebook. So I'm going to grab one more string here. And as you guys can see, I didn't measure that too much. I'm going to go ahead and make this long because I want it to be something that I can hang. So I just kind of eyed it up a little bit. And now I notice that not all of my holes align perfectly. That's okay. Hey, work around here. I can put the string through some and then loop it back through the last one. And there we go. Let's 
So now again, just going to tie this off here at the top. Make a little knot so my book doesn't move around too, too much. And again, just making a basic knot here up at the top, nothing fancy. As you guys can see, now I have uh, both of my strings attached to the top of my book, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and then tie those together and make my last knot. So I've got my loop so I can hang this from a place in my house, in my office, uh, that reminds me that it's easy to access, something that I can quickly get to. Uh, so that way I can use this again whenever I really need that little mini mental vacation. So here it is, guys. Here's our second getaway guidebook in addition to our first, right? Um, just another example of how we can use some different fun, um, simple supplies around our house to get away, right? To make some beautiful places that we can get away to since we can't necessarily get out of our homes right now and because some of these places may be closed, right? Our local and state parks uh, may not be available to us. So I invite you guys to make a book, a getaway guidebook, take those mini mental vacations, get a chance to engage in some relaxation and de-stress and unwind. So hey, from myself and everyone here at the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Valley Cities here in Lakewood, Washington, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this activity. Please, of course, stay at home, stay protected, and stay safe. Until next time, bye.